Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection June 2, 2022 Thursday The seventh week of Easter We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading. A reading from the book of Acts. Acts chapter 22 verse 30 and chapter 23 verse 6 to 11. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees. So he called out before the Sanhedrin, My brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection or angels or spirits while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him? The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage. For just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 16 verse 1 to 2a, 5, 7 to 8, 9 to 10 and 11. Let our response be, Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, My Lord are you, O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup. You it is who hold fast my lot. Response, Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand I shall not be disturbed. Response. Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. Therefore my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence. Because you will not abandon my soul to the nether world. Nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Response. Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joys in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Response. Keep me safe, O God. You are my hope. Alleluia. John chapter 17 verse 21. Alleluia, Alleluia. May they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that the world may believe that you sent me, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Gospel Reading A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John chapter 17 verse 20 to 26. Lifting up his eyes to heaven. Jesus prayed saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me, and I have given them the glory you gave me, 
so that they may be one, as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one, that the world may know that you sent me, and that you love them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name and I will make it known, that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and Father of all people, we believe in you and we know that you love Jesus with a deep and trusting, lasting love. Let your Holy Spirit pour out this love into the hearts of all those who believe in Jesus, our Savior and Shepherd. Let this love unite us in one common bond of understanding and respect for one another and let that love lead us to live for one another and to serve one another for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. How important is Christian unity? Very important. We know that unity brings peace, which brings joy and yields fulfillment. Unity, the two becoming one, is a must for mankind. It is a must in marriage. It is a must in true friendships. It is a must for peace of mind, body and soul. It is a must to end all wars. But most importantly, it is a must for a disciple of the Lord. But what does unity mean? Well, for one thing, it is not a mere Christianity. In other words, it is not a dumbing or watering down for what unites us all. We are not looking for Christ's skeleton or his remains. We are not searching for the humanist Christ or the revolutionary Christ or the anarchist Christ. We are looking for the resurrected body, his glory. In terms of morality, we should move beyond what must I avoid to what must I do. We know what the Lord would say. I want your mind, body, strength and soul. I want it all. And only the Lord can bring us to full communion. Regardless of how charismatic or amazing a leader appears to be, no human leader or ideal will ever bring world peace. The unity that Jesus seeks is similar to the unity he shares with his Father. The Father and I are one is not limited to mere actions or ideas. They are one in divinity, in being. They are one in substance, consubstantial. In fact, in the new translation of the Roman Missal, the term consubstantial has been reintroduced. What was lost has been found. The gift of the Holy Spirit is the Lord's gift to all those who wish to follow him. It is the gift to be another Christ, literally, and he gives us this gift through the sacraments, through prayer and through the sharing of his body, blood, soul and divinity in the Eucharist. We will not find the Lord at the foot of the mountain, we will find him at the top, at the peak. This is where we must climb to. The least amount of effort will never be good enough. The cookies of life will never amount to anything. It is at the peak that we find our Lord, that we are in his presence and that we become one with him. It requires trial as Abraham found. It requires obedience as Moses observed. It requires prayer as the Lord instructed. It also requires faith and strength for all those who wish to climb. Finally, it requires love which is the foundation of all Christian endeavors, in all that the Lord's will desires. Keep me safe, O Lord, for in you I take refuge. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. You will show me the path to life. Fullness of joy is in your right hand forever in your presence. Of course, division is necessary in order to bring unity. The Lord divided and conquered. The Apostles divided. St. Paul divided. 
but this division should never exist among Christians. Christ's brothers and sisters. The division should be among those who still belong to the world and those who are working their way out of this world. A healthy division should exist between the believer and the non-believer. They should know you are Catholic before you even tell them. This is how the world may believe in you and the one who sent you. Lord, you will teach me the path of life. Unbounded joy in your presence. At your right hand delight forever.